Coming up on Double Take Sports Talk, we will update you with the headers, latest headlines and our feelings on free agency so far. That's next on Double Take Sports Talk. Double Take Sports Talk. Welcome to our podcast with Darren Watts here on the opposite side. Say hello, Darren Watts today. Darren Watts, my man. What's going on? <laughs> that much going on with you? Ah, uh, not much, man. Just, just living the day, man. Yeah, just living it one day at a time. All right. Well, we have another episode of our latest headline debates and opinions and and little things that we just want to get out of our system. Uh, Daryl, are you ready to talk about this crazy free agency that we have witnessed yeah, a lot just of this them, week alone? Yeah, a lot of them too. All I'm right. Ready. All right, let's do it then. All right, man. All right, let's have a quick take a look at our uh, latest headlines discussions that we're going to briefly discuss each one. There are 10 different ones that we would like to discuss. Uh, being number one, Ricky Rubio has required by the Jazz 2018 projected first rounder. And then Jeff Teague reaches a three-year $57 million deal with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Nick Griffin... <laughs> Blake Griffin signs a five-year, $173 million deal with the Clippers. Very interesting. It's very shocking. And the Nave reaches a four-year deal to remain with the Houston Rockets. Drew Holiday agrees to an incentive-laden five-year deal with the New Orleans Pelicans. Incentive-laden deal is a fixed price, for those of you that don't know, it's a fixed price or cost reimbursement contract in which a uh, which a, is a large target cost price or fee as a profit. And it's used as a point of departure for various monetary incentives. And the subject gets to a maximum amount. Boy, I cannot talk today. Uh, <clears throat> Stephen Curry signed to a five-year, $201 million extension. Sean Livingston stays with the Warriors for another three years, $24 million. And then Phil Jackson booted it out the door in New York. <laughs> Rajon Rondo raids from the Chicago Bulls, and the Bulls still owe him $3 million. And then the last discussion, which is that created more buzz than I could possibly think over anything that has happened over free agency. The Indiana Pacers send Paul George to the Oklahoma City Thunder for Victor Oladipo and Demonis Sabonis. It's that is, <laughs> that is that is the headlines. Uh, we will get to each of these topics in just one moment. Ricky Rubio, again, was acquired by the Utah Jazz for a 2018 projected first rounder, and Jeff Teague reaches a three-year, $57 million deal with the Minnesota Timberwolves. The question will be, how does this affect both teams, and, how will, they, and will it give them a more competitive edge uh, for their prospective teams? Daryl? Ricky Rubio? Let's think about this here for a brief second. With Ricky Rubio, which I believe is in my top ten of best playmaking and playmakers in the game, and Jeff T as one of the best, I don't know. He's the best of something. I don't know what it is. Yeah, you just can't so, pinpoint it. No, I can't pinpoint it. Because he's 
unbalanced in so many ways. But mm-hmm. anyway, it would, in my personal opinion, it would satisfy the Timberwolves, not the Timberwolves, sorry, uh, the Jazz more than it would the Timberwolves. Nothing against Jeff T, but with Ricky Rubio, he has a clear advantage over Jeff T. Playmaker. I'm a fan of playmakers that can shoot, rebound, and dime them out. He has a clear advantage. He may not be a good rebounder, but he can pass the ball. I believe that the competitive edge would go more to the Timberwolves. In the case, of course, with the addition of Jeff Teague, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, actually, Jeff T going to Minnesota, that would just kind of make the team the same, in my personal opinion. It's not going to improve drastically in any way. Maybe with a couple of dimes, you know, maybe a couple of assists per game. But this right here, the winner of this to me is the Utah Jazz. That I agree with. But at the same time, I, I think that Minnesota might have a, a little bit more edge also when you think about it. Now that Jeff uh, Teague is now teaming up with Carl Anthony Towns, you never know what these two cats can put together. No, you right. I mean, I'm not I'm gonna these two put together. I mean, because you think about it, don't I love Ricky Rubio? I love his ability to pass the ball. He's a great playmaker. He's a phenomenal, great play, uh, playmaker. But to me, it almost when you think about it, it almost evens out when you think about it because you got Carl Anthony Towns and Jeff Teague on one side, and you still got Andrew Wiggins as your guard, other guard. You know, you think about that and you take that to, to consideration. Minnesota did good. This past season, so yeah, they've been, they been through. They did good. Now, although with the subtraction of Ricky Rubio and the uh, an addition of Jeff T, you think about that for a minute. They have something. I believe they do have something. They do have something with Jeff T and Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns. This is a young team. They got something. But then you look on the flip side of that. You look at uh, Utah. You have uh, now. You have. Um, Ricky Rubio, George Hill, George Hill, maybe Gordon Hayworth, if he decided to say, and Ruby Gilbert. Think about it. To me, that almost balances it out. Matter of fact, subtract George Hill from that uh, equation. You got Ricky Rubio, Gordon Hayworth, if he still signs, if he decides to sign with him, and Ruby Gilbert. To me, that seems like almost an even, even share on that behalf of, for the rest of the conference. It could be, but I believe if we're talking about competitive edge and as of for better standings-wise, I believe that the Jazz will still top out the Timberwolves once again. They did it last year. They're talking about it again this year. I believe that Ricky Rubio has more to contribute versus Jeff T. Like I said, it's hard to pinpoint Jeff T and his best abilities because he's not really a high, you know, score. And he's not really much of a diamond. But at the same time, he has the ability to actually pass the ball too, just like Ricky Rubio. But Ricky Rubio brings a lot more to the plate versus Jeff T. That's just me and my personal opinion. I mean, yeah, that's true. But I... I believe that it could be an even spread on that behalf. But, yeah, uh, Utah will have a comp- more competitive they, edge. Yeah, they got some improvement somewhere, both of, yeah. both teams do. Yeah, they do. And I think that it's more of that competitive edge uh-huh. belongs to Utah. But for the, you know, uh, the, the uh, releasing the trade of Ricky Rubio and then the addition of Jeff Teague and a potential first rounder for them, Utah might just have – something for 2018 if they continue to keep what they have now. Yeah, yeah. that's a big boost. Big time. Got a first big time. Yeah, Absolutely. For 2018. Mm-hmm. Ricky Rubio.
Blake Griffin signs a five-year, $173 million deal with the Los Angeles Clippers, and Chris Paul got traded to the Houston Rockets. The question is, will, bring, will bringing Blake Griffin back help the Clippers be a playoff team without Chris Paul? And what will Chris Paul bring to the Houston Rockets play style of Mike D'Antoni? Mr. Griff. And Chris Paul, Daryl. Who? I'm going to be dead honest here. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of heat from this. I'm going to be dead honest with you on this one. With the Clippers bringing back Blake Griffin, nah, it's not going to help him. It's going to stay the same. The same old crap that they've been dealing with, you know, going to the first round get booted out in the first round, having their second half season struggles. Now, a big positive to it is that it would probably bring Blake Griffin more playing time that it could do. But I don't think it's going to help contribute with him on this team. Now, when Chris Paul and Blake Griffin was on the team, you know, they could get something going, but they couldn't with the addition of DeAndre Jordan. They really couldn't get nothing sparked. But with now, with Chris Paul being gone and being traded to the Rockets, I think that they are going to have to change something to their play style because Chris Paul is a starter. You have James Harden and you got Chris Paul. And James Harden played good as a point guard just this past year. And he was in the top three for MVP candidate. And with Chris Paul, something's going to have to mix up with that. Somebody, he's going to have to back him up. Or if they could get a starting spot and Chris Paul be in the shooting guard position. Or something's going to have to work out with that. Uh, something's going to have to change. I'm not 100% sure. Bringing Blake Griffin back, I agree. I agree. It's not going to really benefit them, if anything. Because now, now that Chris Paul is gone, uh, first off, we still don't know who's going to be their starting point guard. Because right now, as a stand, it may just be uh, Austin Rivers until told otherwise. Uh, until they sign somebody or they can, or, or um, somebody can prove that they are a better starter than Austin um Austin Rivers. Mm -hmm. So you think about that. I I just definitely agree with you flat out 100% on that behalf. There's just no way in the world that this is going to benefit anything for the Clippers bringing Blake Griffin back and uh, getting rid of Chris Paul. It just don't help because even if Chris Paul stayed on the team, they would still be that same Clippers team getting booted out the first round or getting booted out the second round and not making it to the conference finals. And on the behalf of uh, Chris Paul with the, the Houston Rockets, the attorney is not afraid to make changes. He will make that change. Chris Paul is not your average point guard. Not, when you, have, not when you have James Harden on the same team. I agree. Chris Paul is going to be a shooting guard. Flat out. He's going to be a shooting guard. There's no question about it. Now, rather if he's going to start or back up, no idea. But he's definitely going to be a starter. I do not believe that <clears throat> Mike D'Antoni is going to actually go back to the beginning and put James Harden as a shooting guard when you have him as one of the greatest point guards as a merger from a shooting guard mm -hmm. to a point guard. I mean, he's just phenomenal. He plays it well at full time. He plays it well. Well, do you Chris think Paul, Chris Paul is just a better? The thing is that Chris Paul is a better play. He's a better, not a playmaker, shot creator. Mm -hmm. He's a better shot creator. James Harden is all the above. Well, do you think, in agreeing with you, do you think that Diatoni is going to split point guard time between Chris Paul and James Harden? Oh, absolutely. Especially if uh, James Harden get into foul trouble. Oh, yeah. That would definitely happen. If James Harden get into foul trouble, yeah, Chris Paul's going to come in and play that chunk of point guard 
uh, minutes and actually uh, who were who was the uh, shooting guard on the team? I, I have no idea. I forgot. I forgot about Patrick Beverly. I got it. Uh, no, I think he left. I think he went to uh, he went somewhere. I think he went to Utah. He might have. I think. I know I he got him. traded. I know he got. Uh, he did something because I know for a fact that uh, he is not with the Rockets anymore. So he mm-hmm. might be with, like you said, in shooting guard. Chris Paul might be in the shooting guard position mm-hmm. um, with Patrick Beverly being gone. That's mm-hmm. yeah, that's without a doubt, and I'm pretty sure. Oh, ooh, he's with the Clippers. Oh, that's right, because he was talking about kicking some, uh, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, because he he wanted to kick his butt because of his trades. So, uh, so forget Patrick Beverly. So yeah, Chris Paul would be their probably their starting shooting guard if you want my honest opinion. Mm-hmm. They probably yeah. that's what that's what probably was going to end up happening because there's just no way that Chris Paul is going to play point guard unless the tone surprise us somehow and actually get him back to where they belong and Harden being a shooting guard. I can't imagine that changing. James Harden is still going to be their starting see, point guard. I see split time. Split. Point. I don't. I see full time for both positions. James Harden point guard. Chris Paul shooting guard. Full time. We'll see. We'll see. Blake Griffin. Chris Paul. <music> Nene reaches a four year deal to remain with the Houston Rockets. Question, is he worth four years, $15 million? Nene, Daryl, here we are. He is, without a doubt. Now, if this was a four-year, $25 million deal, he would not be worth that much. I think four years, fifteen million is enough for him to actually put on the performance that he needs to put on, without no pressure or without no um, no issues whatsoever. Um, because he's an average player, you know he's he's not rising or he's not going below his limits. You know, he's not a high-profile player or he's not a low-profile player either. But he has made his contributions with the Houston Rockets. And with the addition of Chris Paul, you know, that could be able to enable him to get that pick and roll up and running. He may not be a pick and roll. He may not be a pick and popper. But that could probably give him something to work with more to, for him to be more of a contributor to the Rockets. Now, like I said, he has the ability to actually be a star, but he's not quite there yet. He's not quite there. So with with him being four years, 15 million, I think that is fair enough for him, and I think he is worth that much. Four years, $25 million, that would have probably overboard it. But four years, $15 million, without a doubt, I think that's perfect fit. I don't. I think it's too much. Four years is too much, and I think $15 million is too much. I think it's way too much. Uh, like you said, he's an average player, and that's just exactly what he is. I think that is just extremely too much. I think if you go half on both ends, I think that would be more satisfied, more satisfiable for me. Well, you also got to understand this is that he has been the top notch, you know, with the Rockets besides James Harden. And even though that he is an average player, the thing is, is that four years and 15 million, you'll probably want to get, probably get anywhere between three to five million a year. And then within probably his final year, he'll probably get two million. You know, whereas if he was actually getting 25 million, he'll probably get more a year. He probably would have gotten maybe five or six per year, and in his final year, he probably would have gotten probably three. That 
that's too much. I think it's too much, period. No, 15 million is fine. Mm-mm, and he has, much. I felt that he's has actually raised himself up to be an X factor for the team. Regardless. I got to be honest. He's not the same the name that we've seen in Denver. He's not the same. To me, he's not the same the name that we've seen in Denver. Denver, he was more of that punch, one-two punch than what he is with the Houston Well, Rangers. that's because the media didn't put him down already. He's still that X factor. The media has shut him down to the point of where they, yeah, he is not the best player. He's not. But to me, he's average. He's average. He has really put on the best that he could with the Houston Rockets. That's why he has earned that four-year $15 million contract. That's just me personally. I really believe that he has earned that four-year $15 million contract. I, I think that's just a little too much still. I, I, I can't grasp my mind around the fact that four years, $15 million. Hell, he may not even make it four years and it's $15 million. You okay. Know, know at that okay. Point. All right. So what about Trevor Reza then? What if Trevor Reza have gotten a six-year, $45 million contract? Would that be too much? Yep. Okay, not that sure. I agree with. That I agree with. But we're looking at a guy that has tremendous – amount of years in the book with the Rockets. And looking at Nene, he's been with the Wizards. Um, who has he been with? Of course, he's currently playing with the Rockets. The, the Rockets. Nuggets. He's the Nuggets. with the Nuggets. Yeah. And he has with the with the Wizards, he has average 13 points a game, 14. And with the Rockets, you know, he has put on more better performances than anybody that I've seen besides outside of James Harden. It's interesting to hear that. It's very interesting to hear that. He'll be an X Factor. He'll be an X Factor. He's we'll going to be worth that. He's going to be worth that. We'll if see. He we'll see. The name, ladies and gentlemen. Drew Holiday agrees to an incentive latent five-year deal with the New Orleans Pelicans. In case if you guys don't know, a more elaborate definition of what an incentive latent contract is. It's a fixed price or cost reimbursement contract in which a target cost price or fee, as a meaning of a profit, is used as a point of departure for various monetary incentives, subject to be a maximal amount. At the completion of the contract, the incentive payment is computed on the basis of the contractor's actual cost plus a sliding scale of a profit. The profit varies directly in case of cost underruns or inversely in case of cost overruns with the differences between the contract cost and the maximum allowable cost, also called incentive type contracts. That being said, the question will be, does this affect minutes and contributions to the team for Drew Holiday? Mr. Holiday? Wow. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you straight out. Drew Holiday, he has been one of the ones that has actually not exactly been an X factor to the Pelicans, but he has been a big deal to the Pelicans. Now, considering that he is on a incentive laden five year deal, that could that could not only affect his minutes and that could actually contribute less to his team. Unless, unless he decides that he's going to go over that incentive laden to where that if he had, say, oh, for argument's sake, 20 points a game, five rebounds a game, and maybe 
nine assists a game. If he averages over that, he would actually be affecting his minutes, but not necessarily contributing to the team. He would contribute to the team more than he would actually affect his minutes. Well, the thing is, is that we don't know the actual breakdown. Well, of course, that was just uh, that was just <laughs> mainly. I know. I know, but it, we just don't know the actual incentives that come with the contract. We don't know if rather if it's, oh, he has to, you know, be healthy. Or that's just an example. Or he do have to score over 10 points a game or 10 assists a game or something like that. We don't know the exact situation with that. And even at that, this probably is set more in the favor of Lauren. Right. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, Hill, Holiday. Yeah. That was set more in, in that particular situation because he of what he went through well. mm -hmm. with the like it was last year. You know, he had to take a he had to take the rest of the year, I believe it was last year, the year before last, he had to take the rest of the year off to, to you know, to be, be with his wife. Yeah, uh Lauren Holiday. So this is probably more of a set in for him just in case, you know, something like this was to happen again. So the New Orleans Pelicans are actually looking out for him. So this would be a more benefit. So it may not even have anything to do with a statistical standpoint. It's more to a point where they have to consider what's going to happen with Lauren in the in the upcoming, you know, months of the NBA. And if he does have to leave again, he would still be able to have, in particular, package to still have some type of income come in to right. at least be able to provide. So it's more of a, of a personal standpoint. But see, here's the, here's the thing about that, though. Here's the, here's the question about that. If with him agreeing to that instead of the five-year deal, it would be more of a question of would that affect his starting point guard position. Because, of course, Lauren hasn't been feeling well. And he, he did, at one point, have to take the rest of the year off. Maybe this could be, is this going to affect his starting point guard role? Because I don't think so. Right now, it would just be, it, well, it can be. It would just probably more effective as minutes, you know, considering that if she does get sick, he probably wants to take care of it. It probably will affect minutes, but it won't be based upon uh, performance issues. It yeah. won't be based upon that. Right. It won't be based upon that. It would well, be more based on upon, you know, you know, he has to go be with his wife. Well, my thing is, is that it's good that he did. It's good that they actually looked out for him with that. Uh, yeah. That instead of the, uh, yeah. Thing. That's a good thing. No doubt about it. But with that kind of contract, that do come with a risk. Now, we may not know what kind of risk that'll come out to be. Mm -hmm. It can come out to be a major risk. Yeah. And he'll have to be more careful about how he would consider playing time and considering family. Now, of mm -hmm. course, with any player in the NBA or with anybody that is still working in, a, in their profession, mm -hmm. family's always going to come first. Rather, mm -hmm. Well, if you're if you're single, then it's not going to matter. But right. if you have a family that you have to support for, family's going to come first. Yeah. And with that type of risk that that could happen, is like you said, it's a fixed price or cost reimbursement that could add or eliminate, depending on how much games he missed mm -hmm. due to taking care of his wife, or it could add more to the fact of if he's healthy, you know. So there are a lot of things that you have to look at. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll see how that works and see if it does actually affect anything within his contribution in minutes. Drew Holiday. Sean Livingston stays with the Golden State Warriors, three years, $24 million. Question would be, does this help with team chemistry or do Sean Livingston just makes a better bench player behind Stephen Curry or both? Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, Sean Livingston. <laughs> I said this before we got on, and I'm going to say this again. 
Sean Livingston, God bless your soul because you are one of the best point guard post score in the game. <laughs> man, I ain't never, I ain't never seen a man like Sean Livingston next to Mark Jackson that can actually post, that can actually post up a player and score on them. And Sean Livingston is what six foot four. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he his damn advantage. He really can. OMG. Let me he tell really you. Can. Let me tell you. Does this help the team chemistry or do Livingston make a better bench player behind Stephen Curry or both? Damn it. Let's triple that. That's more than what they need. <laughs> he is the best. He is by far, in my personal opinion, the best bench player that you could ever put on a man on a team. He is the best contributor that you could ever see behind Stephen Curry, and he's the best backup that you can see backing up Stephen Curry. You can't see no other man that's no more taller than six foot zero that can put to what Tom Livingston can do. Both, by far, the best. If they was the, if they had gotten rid of him, the Warriors would have been in trouble. Because yeah. you got to look at the position of this. The Golden State Warriors face an opponent. You got to face a man in the starting lineup of Stephen Curry that has dribbles, playmaking abilities, and is a scorer. Oh, man. That's going to be rough as hell. Then, to make the, put the icing on the cake to make things worse, you got a bench player that could play the point guard position by the name of Sean Livingston. Especially if that point guard defender don't have post defense. Thank you. That makes it even worse. Worse. You go down there in the post, it's like, I can't can't do nothing with this man. I'm six foot zero. He's six foot four. (laughs) Not to mention if you had another point guard like Isaiah Thomas, that dang near four foot two. It was score all over you. Yes, both. Both. What gets me about Sean Livingston, girl, (laughs) besides all of what you just said, there's just one thing that really gets me that stands out on him besides the the post-playing contributor and and, and just being a bench player. That's one of the things that just stands out to me. His wingspan. Ridiculous, ain't it? It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Where did it come from? Protector. Yeah. As a point guard. As a point guard. Hey, he could make a good defensive uh, player. You know, when it comes down to a point guard, if he wanted to, he could make a good one. And uh, and I'm sure if we probably have seen that numerous times, of course, I ain't seen it in the game, but I'm sure that we probably have seen it on the numerous occasions where Sean Livingston have actually sat there and and played good defense, his wingspan, and him and the fact being so tall, being a point guard, you know, his wingspan is what really gets it. His wingspan is what makes him be able to stretch over a defender to be able to play that post position. Because if it weren't for that wingspan, Daryl, he might be a whole different ball player. Uh, you ain't got to tell me that, dude. I already know. This is a guy that has came back from knee injuries, from multiple other injuries, and one also, the most important one, <laughs> that one that almost cost his life. And I can't remember what it was. I, can't I don't know if it was the knee or that was career. Yeah, it was a – it was a – career-ending ACL, and that he had a high chance that his leg would have been amputated. And he may not be able to walk again. Bouncing a player that. like that. I didn't know that. Didn't know that at all. Yes. Yeah, he had Yeah, he had a lot. Of the, he's healthy. He's mm-hmm. healthy. Very healthy. He took his time with his injuries, just like Grant Hill did. Took his time with his injuries. Which and he could still play another 10 years if he wanted to. Yeah, he could. He could. He could be 59 and still play another 10 years. Jordan can too. Jordan could too. Absolutely. And that right there, that just that just tells me right there that when you're when you're a guy like Livingston, he he's the best. Shoot. He has not scored average under 15 points a game. 
It's either 17, 19, or 18. You're the best. And back up. Yep. Sean Livingston. What else? Stephen Curry to sign a five-year, $201 million extension. Question. Is this too much for a guy you can't predict will win more rings? What else, Curry? Daryl. Who? <laughs> Darren. Five years, $201 million extension. Think if that was Nene in that position. Think of what? If that was Nene in that position. Oh, that'd be way <laughs> too much. Oh, way too much. I mean, if not being funny, this is too much for him. I'm sorry, this is too much for Steph Curry. You think about that. I agree. And here's why I say that. Because with Steph Curry, there's a lot of balance that you have to think about with this. When he won his first NBA championship, he did it without Kevin Durant. Yeah. The second year that he went to the NBA Finals, Durant was the round, and they lost. Mm -hmm. And this year, they had Kevin Durant, and they won. They just so, whooped their butt a little bit more easier. Exactly. And it's like how we mentioned it in, you know, in the earlier when Kevin Durant had got added to the Golden State Warriors, the points per game is going to boost up. Everything in the category is going to boost up. And at the same time, with Stephen Curry, that questions this five-year, $201 million contract extension because you have a man that has really pretty much done it all, but is it worth that much if he's going to win that more, more rings? Mm -hmm. I don't see it. I don't see it. Because you have to consider a lot of things. Is he going to stay healthy? If he stays healthy, that's going to take a big chunk out of his, you know, earnings. Absolutely. It's going to take a big chunk. So you have to consider a lot of things. And he has been hurt, but he has been bouncing back on the healthy side of everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, that is a lot to consider. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you. That that could be too much for him, especially if he doesn't have the race. It's way too much because we have no idea what, what, what we'll bring out within the next few years. Um, now, his, on the performance standpoint, if they look at it that way, then it probably won't be too much. You probably be worth but, it. Yeah, but if they looking at, you know, all we can, you know, we're looking at possibility that he could win more rings, can't actually, you know, say that for sure. Right. You know, you could sit now, you could sit there probably say for sure, oh, yeah, uh, he'll have, you know, one of those years where he might have, let's just throw it out there. I don't know if it's going to happen. Let's just throw it out there. Fantasy, go ahead. Yeah, a triple-double in the uh, uh, averages of points, rebounds, and assists. Oh, like Westbrook. Yeah. I mean, it might just happen. It might just happen. You know, he, you know, distribute the ball more, still shoot the ball more. You know, he might have that He might have that advantage. You know, he, that might help him with, you know, getting his earnings worth, but not, you know, if they could, you know, they basing this off if he can win the rings. So, no, no, that's not something to go with. Now, since you said that, with Stephen Curry with this five-year, $201 million contract decision, do you think that could be well fitted more for Russell Westbrook? No. <gasps> I didn't think about that. No. No. See, he I might know be what, getting more. I know what you're going this contract extension, though, Darren. He what? Might be getting more. I know where you're going with that. I just find it hard to believe that this man. It, it, it's really that much of a team player, in my personal opinion. I have I mean, triple doubles. Listen, listen. Just think about how Russell Westbrook distributes his assists by quarter. Just think about that for a minute. Just think about it for a minute. Think about how he distributes the ball and get assists in each quarter. 
that don't necessarily mean that, you know, he's the greatest team player in the world. But just think about that for a minute before you jump to that conclusion. Think about how much assist that he might get in a quarter. Just think about that for a minute. But the question is, how many assists <laughs> does he have at the end of the damn game? It don't matter how many assists he have in the game. To you me, that don't matter. By quarter, two. I'm breaking it down by quarter because you have to think about the consideration of how much he passes the ball throughout the game. Now, you're thinking about it as a whole game. It's like, oh, he's automatically a team player. No, dude. Think about it this way. He needs Look at help. What else can you ask from a man? He's doing everything he can to help the Thunder get to the playoffs. Now he got an addition to what's his face? You know, Paul George. Yes, he is. Do he was doing more just to try to at least bring his team to the playoffs because he needs more help. Have a, a, a warning and advice when I say this. Do not be surprised if Paul George averages and, and, and points goes down. Just don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. And, and think about this while you're sitting up here throwing out ideas out there, hot pants. What if Russell Westbrook asked for Paul George? Because he needs help. You ever thought about that? Suppose that Russell suppose that Russell Westbrook don't want to possibly sign a contract extension because of the addition of Paul George. Shove it. Shove it, shove it, shove it. Just hush. It don't even make a difference. We'll find out. We'll find out. Stephen Curry led it to Russell Westbrook and Paul George, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
That is two different coaching styles. It just don't work. It don't work. Girl, that is like me and you going out there and coaching. Well, we could almost get away with it, but going out there and coaching one home, one away. <laughs> it just don't work. We got too much different play styles. You're a point guard. I'm a shooting guard. Your role model is Magic Johnson. Mine's is Reggie Miller, Ray Allen, shooters. Have those dudes on the court play on the line shoot the ball. There's just so many different inconsistencies between Kurt Rambis and Phil Jackson to be able to coach a team on the road and on at home. It's just too – it's not going to work. It ain't going to work. He was free to turn New York City and the Knicks into a disaster. That was the greatest move ever because his ego, his ego is the reason why. His ego got in the way because he got 11 rings. He coached two of the greatest teams, and he thought that he could come in there and be a president and could be the exact same way. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. You got to know geometry in order for you to have that type of knowledge of door to triangle offense. Yeah. And my thing is with that, with Phil Jackson, he has really shown the ability that he could be more of a basketball player versus a president of a vice president. Of and a coach. He could be a fantastic coach. Yeah, he has he has really taken his 11 rings and said, look, these are my knowledge, okay? These are my knowledge. What you got to understand is, is that if you say that these rings are your knowledge, who the hell are you giving your knowledge to? You ain't giving it to Jeff Warnershack. No. You sure as hell ain't giving it to Carmelo Anthony because he don't know a damn thing about the triangle offense. You see that shit with the disasters in midair. Yeah. And whether you, you can't – you have to give your knowledge based off the game, but you can't give it based off of a coaching style that nobody has no idea. That would have took years to build. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You That's see, it did right. with Chicago. Yeah, exactly. When Tex Raiders came in and the other guy came in, and then Phil yeah. Jackson, oh. Yeah. yeah it, it took, took some time. To that up. Yeah, it took a while. Now, Kobe studied Jordan, so right. he had a little bit of an advantage. Exactly. So that kind of helped. And Shaq could just fit in with anything because he's just brilliant. Exactly. So, you know, that didn't take no time. It sure didn't. You know, so and Rick Fox and all those older players, they have pretty somewhat knowledge of, of all that. So doing that, that right there, that was a good move. Get rid of yeah. him before they all just lost their minds and just I walked agree. off the court. Yeah, I agree. Protest. Bill Jackson. Rajon Rondo got raids from the Chicago Bulls. But the Bulls still owe him $3 million. Here's the question. Who does Rajon Rondo have a better shot with? And does this also, also, I know, does this also take a lot of pay cut for the Chicago Bulls considering that they still owe him $3 million? Rajon Rondo. Oh, yeah. Rajon Rondo, if I, if I was Rajon Rondo, this is what I would do. And I'm sorry for, I apologize in advance when I'm saying this, because at this point, this is just me talking out the side of my mouth. This is what I would do if I was Rajon Rondo. If I was Rajon Rondo, the Bulls still owe him $3 million. Get you a contract. That, that is not worth a dime and sign yourself up with the most pathetic team in America, get them maybe 25 wins at the end of the season, take your three million and sign yourself up with a better team like, oh, let's just say the Clippers. Or let's sign up with, oh, let's see. Long shot? Real long shot. 
but the Pacers need a true point guard. I was going to suggest that. The Pacers need a real point guard. They need a real point guard. Because right now they have nobody. They have nothing. And they could probably sit there and say right now, oh, you still got Joe Young and Aaron Brooks. Nobody. We need a point guard. Exactly. Nobody. They don't. They don't even. They don't even contribute you an average of point three minutes per game. No, absolutely. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> it don't make no sense. I'm sorry. Just don't. Just cut the nonsense. <laughs> point three. Point three minutes per game. Split the Pope and Eel. <laughs> cut it out, man. Just stop. What are you? What are you saying to yourself? Oh, that is bad. Save your look, save bad. yourself. Look, yeah. we got people out here that need to be baptized into a religion. Save yourself. Yeah. This right here is no different when you're taking a man like Aaron Brooks and Joe Young that's divided up into not even a minute per game, and you think that you can actually get yourself somewhere. No, man, get Rajon Rondo. This man probably averaged more than about 25 minutes a game, played about, oh, maybe 40,000 minutes a game. And there was one game in particular that he played the whole entire game. Mm -hmm. Do you think Chicago. Aaron Brooks doing that? No. Chicago made a big mistake getting rid of him. Yes, they did. And Not unless, well, no, no. They made a mistake. I'm going to tell you that right now. They made a mistake. I don't care what anybody say. The Bulls made a mistake getting rid of them. And I'm going to tell you, if it wasn't for Rajon Rondo that uh, gotten hurt when he broke his wrist or something like that, mm -hmm. that would have been a spoiler. The Chicago Bulls would have moved on and faced another team in the uh, in the, um, in the uh, semifinals. Mm -hmm. It would have been Boston. It would have been Chicago. Rajon Rondo got hurt, and that's what blew up their chances. It wasn't Jimmy Butler. Cut the crap. Mm -hmm. Let's cut that right now. It ain't Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler ain't got nothing to do with this. Jimmy Butler and they know that, but that's why he got traded. They exactly. know that. That's he why he got traded. Exactly. He is not a rising star. So let's cut that pull out right now. Because if... But, so, let's go ahead. I'm going to say, because even at that, they made a mistake by getting rid of Rajon Rondo. Had no been doing in the first place. So you made a, you, 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 you made a good judgment move, but then you made a bad one by going on and getting rid of Rajon Rondo. And then, what, and then what makes it worse... Like you said, like you asked, they still owe him three million. They still owe him three million. That could have been opened up to signing, you know, a decent player. Yeah. You know, that could have been more of signing a decent player versus him owing three more million dollars. That's why I said, shoot, if that was me, three million dollars, I would have signed with the most pathetic team for at least a year. At least a year. Give me about five million, you got yourself a deal. Mm -hmm. And then when that time comes, I would have had my five million. I'd have had my three million. I would have went and signed somewhere else that I know I could have had potential and win the championship with. Rather if it was the Clippers, rather if it was the Pacers, rather if it was the Rockets, rather if it was uh, going back to the Kings, rather if it was. Um, it would um, be nice San Antonio. if I. San It would be, yep. Yeah, San Antonio would be a good spot, but I would rather, I would actually be honest, I would like to see him go back to Boston. Well, they got Isaiah Thomas there. I don't think ain't nowhere in the world that'll work. I would like to see him go back to Boston. Well, I'm gonna be honest. I would love for him to go to the Pacers. I would love that too. I would love that too. They but they ain't paying no money for Rajon Rondo. Well, but he's I wouldn't really mind seeing him. He's not really worth that much. Yeah, but they're not still anymore. Have... Pacers, it is. Bargain. Just saying. Rajon Rondo. The Indiana Pacers send Paul George to the Oklahoma City Thunder for Victor Oladipo and Dermanidis Sabonis. Question, is this a good move or a bad move? And if you watched the previous podcast, you should have a good idea of what the answers should be. <laughs> Paul George? Darren, I'm going to let you have the honest on this one. Well, I'm, I'm just going to say this. You know, I'm just going to be very brief with it. A lot of people have sat down and said how bad of a move this was for the Indiana Pacers to, to not have a backbone. 
at this point, this could be a good move. And a lot of people don't see why that is. Let me sit down and, and, and try to explain this the best way that I can. Again, I talked about this in the last podcast show. Traditional lineup. Big two big men, your small forward, and your two guards. Same thing could be going here. Take a look at what Larry Bird did in the 90s. Right after Larry Brown left. Mark Jackson, Reggie Miller, uh, uh, Jalen Rose. Built him up into a star. Oh, Dale yeah. Davis, Rex Smith. You know, traditional lineup. They all got transformed into one thing. Shooters. Rex Smith, basic jumpers. Dale Davis wasn't even a jump shooter. Started taking jump shots. That's how they beat the Knicks in six. Jalen Rose, beyond the arc, basic jumpers. Reggie Miller, already a shooter. And then Mark Jackson, any time that Reggie Miller drove into the paint, dish it out to Jackson. Jackson take the open three. They did that the entire 1999-2000 season, which brought them to the NBA Finals for the first time. System merger of the NBA. And you know what else they improved on in that aspect there? Free throws. Bingo. Free throws. That was another thing that they improved on. Because yeah. they're shooting, they were able to do better on their free throws. So now you have it years later with Larry Bird becoming executive president of basketball operations for the Indiana Pacers. He went back to that traditional lineup. Roy Hibbert, David West, Paul George, Lance Stevenson, George Hill. They're phenomenal. Mm -hmm. There was one problem with that whole ordeal. Rarely any of them were shooters. Yep. That became a problem, but they still did good. Yep. Right. What could this possibly be turned into now? What can this possibly be turned into? It could be possibly a traditional lineup. You now got a shooter, Victor Oladipo. You need a point guard that can be able to shoot the ball and pass the ball at the same time. Better small forward and better two big men. You never know what this could turn out to be. You never know what this is going to turn out to be. And it's already, and, and absolutely, this is a good move. This is a good move, and it comes at a risk for Oklahoma because of the fact that they only got Paul they George. Year. They only got him for that year. Yeah. And he, he is open to actually staying with a team like the Oklahoma City Thunder. So, but he's wanting to go to Los Angeles. He's wanting so. to go to Los Angeles, but he's still open to that opportunity. So if it goes the way that he wants to, odds are he could sign and stay with the Thunder. Mm -hmm. But I know at some point at the end of his career that he's going to want to play for the Lakers, which is totally fine. And looking at that, Paul George, that just takes a lot of distractions away before training camp. That's why I also say this is also a good move, too. Not necessarily a rush, but it's a good move. And yeah, and you distract. get to rebuild. You can get to rebuild, get all them distractions, them cobwebs off. Now you can actually sit down and, and he could take on the game. And he could take his whiny ass on somewhere else, Oklahoma City, and whine there. Mm, period. Yeah. Because that, that, to me, I'm not – I wasn't a fan of that. You know, like I said, when they had the traditional lineup, he did a lot better with the traditional lineup that he did when they did, when Larry Bird moved into the whole fast-paced uh, offensive scheme, which I thought was a bust because of the fact, as we can see. Now, don't get me wrong. You got Miles Turner, phenomenal. Check. Check. You know, Thaddeus Young in addition. Check. You know, that that's pretty decent. You know, I'm not even going to lie there. That, that, that could be your good that could really be your good, you know, if they could go back to the bench playing if they want to, that could be their good bench players to come off the bench and run fast. You know, that could be a good, that could be. And it could also still could, could be, you know, that good traditional lineup to where they could pace themselves and not move so fast to be able to, you know, get fast break points. Get back to that traditional. You got Miles Turner, that is, and they both can shoot the ball. You got Victor Oladipo can shoot the ball. You know what I'm saying? You, that's, what, that's what the Pacers need. They need shooters. That's how they made it to the 2000 playoffs, right. shooting. Right. But it went until they got into the, to the finals where they just uh, start stinking. But then game five, they showed out with 120 points. Mm -hmm. So now they're, that, just, that just threw everything away now. That was a good move. Yep. Yep. perfect move. I, I, thought thought I thought it was good. I thought it was good, too. I thought it was good. Paul George.
All right, Darren. Any final thoughts? Absolutely not. Neither do I. I'm hungry. I'm ready to get the hell out of here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. you know a lot of people have been talking about you and that eating and all that good stuff. <clears throat> I don't know why people are talking about me for sure. I'm just eating. I'm eating good. Exactly. Yeah. Eating. So? Because they're trying to figure out <clears throat> they trying to figure out why you eat so much at the weight show but I eat nothing but junk cookies and chips and, and all this good stuff, but the weight don't show. So they're trying to figure out why that is. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm meant to be fat. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's meant for you to be skinny and not have weight show. Oh, spare me. Well, you're still a fat boy, so it don't make a damn difference. I, that ain't the point. We're not even talking about me. For what are we talking about you? I know, but I'm still going to say, regardless to the fact, rather, if they're talking about me or not, you're still a fat boy, regardless. Regardless. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah, you think you want to sport your little, you know, your little, your little skinniness and think that you could just, uh, you know, stretch. Don't start with me. <laughs> and then. I wish I wouldn't have told you that. <laughs> oh, I wish I wouldn't have told you that. I was yeah. gonna know. Look, I was gonna know anyway, regardless. There yeah, you was. Now. So you didn't have to tell me. Now it could have been probably days or months later. I still probably wouldn't have found out, but somehow, some way I was gonna find out. So you could take it. <laughs> I wish I would have told you. <laughs> I wish they wouldn't have told you. I just wish I would have just sat there. You could have did a Michael Jackson dance. <laughs> Shoot. You almost passed for it. <laughs> oh man, I wish I I wish I would have stayed at home that night. I wish I would have stayed. Uh -huh. See, sir, you're right. You always making fun of me too, sir. I was not making fun of you. I was making a statement. I was telling you what other people would say it had nothing to do with me. I was just being a courteous person by telling you. Courteous? Yes. You be up there joning on me too. But I wasn't joning on you. I wasn't joning on you. I was laughing. That works enough. You sitting up there supporting that bull. 27 hot dogs. 27? That's what they said, not me. That's what I'm saying. I ain't gonna do that. That's what I think. Look, I ate close 18. <laughs> <laughs> See? And that's the bad part. And I was telling Tara, I was telling her, I was like, oh my that's God. That's who was talking about you. Yeah, see, that's the bad part. And yeah, she's right. 27. 27. All of them, hot dog buns. Not one missed. Dude, you know those little organic hot dogs only got six in the pack? They ain't doing me no good. You still ain't got no room talking about me. Well, you worse than me, shoot. You eating you eating one that actually had twelve in the pack. Twelve hot dog buns. I ended up looking like a hot dog when I was done with it. Yes, you was. You look like a big old plump wiener dog. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, I'm getting <laughs> out of here. I'm getting hungry. But in the meantime. I can hear your stomach growling. <laughs> yeah, my stomach. It is. It was growling. I know. It was growling. Yeah, I'm ready to eat. Um, anyway, uh, that is our edition of Double Take Sports Talk. If you like, you can have yourself a dinner. You look like you frying like Crisco over there. I am. I'm kind of warm. You want to finish this off? No. Mm -mm. Anyway. Go ahead. That ends our edition of Double Take Sports Talk. If you like what you see, you give this video a thumbs up. How you feel about today's show, you comment on the comment section below. As usual, we are here. You can also comment on Facebook, Twitter, our personal counsel, Facebook and Twitter. 
However you want to do it, by all means, we're here. But in the meantime, I'm Durham. Here's on the opposite side. Oh, wow. Yep. All right. Catch up with us on another episode of Double Take Sports Talk. Until then. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry. I, catch up with us on another episode of Double Take Sports Talk. Until then. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy with you. <laughs> I hate you. You love me. <sighs> Watch out. <laughs> Double Take Sports Talk here with me, Daryl Watts. As many of you know, me and Daryl enjoy talking sports and giving out stats, but we also enjoy entertaining while doing it. So with that being said, you can check us out on the social media side and get more involved in our podcast. And we're on Twitter at DTST2414. Or you like us on Facebook, Double Take Sports Talk page at The Watch Brothers. We're also on YouTube. Like, share, do what you got to do with that. Once again, we don't mind. <laughs> also, we are finally back on the podcast app for audio only purposes for those who enjoy audio only of our podcast. We're also on the blog, featured critical thinking of analysis, and you can check that out at double take sports talk dot blogspot dot com. Thanks again.